Steve Proud, and today we're going to talk about connecting a CMMP PM0 uh, via can open to a Unitronics V570 PLC. The uh, first place we go to is the uh, FESTA website. Uh, when you get to the FESTA website, www.festo.com, click on products, configure your motor controller, and you'll see here that uh, you end up with this motor controller, CMMP ASM0. That's what it looks like. Um, there she is. Okay. And. Uh, in addition to the catalog data, you can have uh, all the support download area. This is where you download your manuals. I have the, the literature right here. The uh, FHPP manuals right here. This is the one you want for this particular exercise here. You would just download this. This is the uh, the manual you're looking for here. And uh, <clears throat> in addition to that, you need the software, which is the the SCT or the FESA configuration tool plugin. I'm not using the latest. I'm using a little bit older, two two point eight version, and uh, None of the libraries exist for this controller, so you have to do everything by bit. This is why you need the, uh, the literature. And uh, the Unitronics website, there's the Unitronics website address right there. Okay, so first thing you would need to do is to uh, configure the wiring or, or physically wire the controller to the CMMP. So, this little picture right here is uh, the best I can do to help you out. So we have the Unitrox PLC on the top left. That's the can open port. And the uh, external supply comes in at the top and bottom. This is required. If you don't have this, it will not run. That 24 volts is not wired to the premium controller. Uh, if you wire it somewhere, then you could possibly damage it. And this connector here, the Ernie connector, is. Uh, the Festo part number, and uh, you have the inline resistor, and that's how you wire that. Can open ports right here on the face of the unit. The uh, next thing we'll talk about here is the programming. So this is the version that I'm using. 9831 build zero from the Unitronics website. Uh, it's a VizLogix programming software. And uh, their CAN interface is not something where you can import EDS files. They do have that, but on, on different PLCs. And the therefore, you have to kind of build your, your own network uh, settings and configuration and so forth. So, what I've done here is I've come up with a couple routines here to simplify things. You can put them all in one routine if you like. Um, the, the main routine here, I come through here, I've got a power up bit and I've got a PLC ID of one. Double click on that. We're using can open, not uh, Unican or can layer two or anything like that. It's just can open one megabod with a one second timeout. Then we have our CAN configuration here. And uh, I'm using node two. This is what the uh, CMMP is configured for, node two. And uh, before I go further with this, I'm just gonna show you the, uh, the software for the controller. So I'm just gonna go offline here. So the premium controller, we've got it wired now and uh, you also have to wire the uh, the 25 pin DB connector on the top for the minimum stuff, which is like the DIN 4 and DIN 5, which is end stage enable and the, the controller enable. And the uh, 
the configuration here is just uh, very simplified here. It's just you have an M0, uh, you have a motor, access configuration, and uh, important to understand is the version of firmware is in the controller. This app, we're doing uh, 4.0.15.1.2.3, and uh, under the operating mode settings, we're set up for can open. So that's what we're using today. And uh, nothing else special here. I'm just gonna, you would basically skip through and configure the your load and things like that. But I'm just gonna skip over that because I'm assuming you know how to do some of this and get right down to the field bus settings. So in this particular project here, I have uh, configured the MAC ID or the node address for two, uh, the one megabot or the one 1000 kilobyte. The data profile is FHPP because that's what we want. Uh, factor group, I'm just using two. Just means that the whole number that's sent from the PLC, uh, you just move the decimal places over over two. So if you want to send, uh, you know, a move target of, you know, 100.55, then you would send uh, 10055 as a whole number over the, the registers and it would be interpreted as 100.55. And there's nothing special over here on the editor, just the fact that we're using the the two areas here, the control and the parameter as a default. And then direct mode is also important because the data profile, the base velocity here is selected in the PLC as a zero to 100%. So 100% being 2,400 millimeters in my project. If you put 1,000 here, 100% would be 1,000 millimeters per second. And the Excel decel is set for each move right here. So this is pretty much it for the, the drive. You can go online and monitor without inhibiting communications. And down here at the bottom here, you have the ability to monitor the FHPP data. This is message to and from the PLC. and uh, if you were using FHPP, you'd have this area here, but basically at this point, you would come in here, you would turn on this here, enable the drive, you would verify this here works, try to home, do a variety of things, and uh, set this, and then you can move this thing, now jog it manually. This is your commissioning area at the bottom here, and, uh, the uh, 25 relative move, so it'll move 25 millimeter stop, 25 millimeter stop. So there's really not much else here. There's a the diagnostics area. You can read all the data, read the permanent data, and uh, that's it. So you've commissioned this. You've got the field bus settings proper, and now you move into the PLC side of things. So I'm just going to hide this real quick. Getting back to this area here. I've got a picture here just to explain this a little bit better for everybody. And uh, so this right here is, I'm just popping this up here. So, so you've got node two that I've configured here. And under the emergency, I'm using this these bits right here. And you've got uh, network management telegrams, you've got uh, TPDOs and RPDOs, you know, transmit, receive. And uh, I've just kind of highlighted this right here to show you, you know, where these are mapped and what they're called in the uh, my code here, the sample code. And uh, basically you've got emergency telegrams, you've got uh, to transmit, to receive uh, amounts of, uh, to transmit to receive PDOs. <clears throat> Hopefully this looks, makes a little bit of sense for the amateur user here. And uh, I'll just close that now. I'll close this, so that's what's configured right here. And you scroll through these right here, that's what's configured. And this is just the V, this is just the name. This is just a counter. And then this routine basically jumps out to the other subroutines. So, um, Let's talk about our PDOs right now. So we'll, we'll get into CAN status. So 
CAN status here. We're just monitoring the, the network uh, telegrams here, and we will display and operate the different modes of operation here. The uh, this NMT control here puts it into four different modes. You've got stop, you've got run. I mean, pre-operation when you've got stop, reset, so on and so forth. Very simple routines. It's built in part of the networking uh, instructions here. You know, start remote node. This one over here is enter pre-op state. This one here is stop the remote node. And then the last one would be uh, uh, reset the node. Okay. The uh, the other section I have here is you have the ability to send uh, send and receive SDO uh, commands. That would be in your uh, your your literature for the Festo controller. And uh, just go back here for a second here. So. So right here, this uh, this transmit is basically coming from the remote node to the PLC, and this is basically coming. This data is coming in all the time and being populated without any without any effort from the PLC. Um, but to get the data to uh, the controller, uh, you need to do a little bit of code here, which is right here. This PDO. And uh, there's a can open send PDO. This one here, I'm just I'm just sending PDO number one, which is the first eight bytes to node number two. And uh, I don't send that unless the buffer is uh, is is not full and the network is up and running in in run state, and uh, the buffer is not full. Uh, this is another way of looking at it. So basically, when the buffer is not full, we send the data out. Which and the data itself is already configured under the PDO. The PDO, in fact, is right here, the 1300. So everything 1300, which is the PDO number one, gets sent out. Um, and then the gist of all that is I take the raw data and I move it into uh, the registers here. So just going to pause this for one second, find a document I have here. Okay, so I have this document here. This document is basically extracted from this Festo manual here. And the one I, this is an older version of it, but there's a there's a 2015 version. It really hasn't changed much, and uh, it's it's a common protocol that's being used to, or a common profile that's being used to to pass data from the HMI slash PLC to the device. Other PLCs, other field buses, it's all the same data, same same format. And you've got a control area and a FPC area, a festive parameter channel. The control area is only what I'm using right now. Uh, you guys want to figure out how to use the FPC, you're going to have to do that yourself. I just give you the tools to, to do the basic moves and whatnot. You want to build on that, you go right ahead. So there is, uh, it, it shows you two sets of eight bytes here, but in fact, it's just showing you two different modes. So there's a record mode and there's direct mode. And that's based on the, uh, the, the couple couple bytes. The first bytes don't change, but based on a couple of bits in these first bytes, it changes the mode of operation. This sample that I have here is only direct mode. So direct mode position, because there's three modes of direct mode as well. There's force, velocity, and position. We're, we're talking about position only today and I don't think I'll do anything other than that moving forward and uh, so I'm just going to sc scroll ahead here this is record mode which we're not talking about and then there's direct mode so direct mode simple the the first PDO if I go back to the PDO here um, right here so 1300, length of 8, and 1100, length of 8. That's where the raw data is coming in. 
and this right here shows you the eight bytes get your control area and your status area and you know there's your bits right there bits right there and we're using position mode so byte 4 in position mode it represents velocity as a percentage of velocity as i said earlier this is a percentage of the uh, value right here and Close out here. The the last four bytes is the actual position target as a whole number, as discussed earlier. Um, this is that simple here. So what I'm doing here, I'm just gonna scroll down here, see if I can show a little bit of both here. So if I go back to the map inputs. You'll see here that <clears throat> uh, this this routine map inputs here is taking you know MI1100, throwing it into 800 for 16 bits, and then it populates from 1101 another 16 bits. So basically, the first four bytes of data, which is you know uh, coming from this is the status. So that's these bytes right here. Uh, sorry, it's picking up the wrong page here. Basically. This right here, this right here, this right here, and this right here. It's taking the actual value and shoving it into the MB bits. If I go to the MB tags here, I've labeled labeled this right here. Let's go to MB800, and you'll see here that the SCON, the SCON, and it just goes from left to right, top to bottom, and it's a match. And then the next byte starts. So we're basically mapping the data in. And uh, once we've done the 16, uh, for, for a user-friendly interface for uh, the velocity, um, which is the actual value right here, which is byte four, uh, I'm throwing that into an MI120, so just an integer. And then the last four bytes of data, which is this area down here for the actual position, I'm taking that from 1102 and shoving it into uh, the double word 100 here, which is the actual position. And uh, that's it for mapping the inputs, mapping the outputs. Similarly, it's just reversed. You know, I'm using MI128, which is the uh, that'll be the uh, 128 is the set point velocity, and I'm shoving that into MB857 as a bit pattern, which I am then. Uh, later transferring it to the 1300 or 1301 here. Uh, this one right here, MB833. So the output data starts here and basically ends up right here. And that's being turned out to the to the node. And then the last one here is the target position I'm coming from double word 101 and uh, which is the target and I'm putting that into 1302 and that's it so we've got a, a screen interface as well and uh, on the main screen you know CMMSAS node 2 there's there's the status that I'm looking at there and the reset stop pre-op and start that is controlling these right here these one shots and if you go to the second page here, this is a, the right hand side is all indicators and status and the left hand side is the control area. So, and then this right here is the SDO page for upload and download. 
I don't use it that much, but it's 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 just thrown in there. But I'm gonna talk about this one right here. So this right now has already been downloaded to the project. And uh what I'm gonna try and do here is is uh, is go online. So F9 goes online, um and then to, sh to try and show you uh, what's happening on the main screen here, I'm just going to bring this up. So this is the uh, this is this screen right here. This is a live right now. So right now we're, we're stopped. Um, so by clicking this stop button, I just stopped it. Um, I'm going to put it into pre-op. Now in pre-op, I clicked on this button here, and then I'm going to click on start. And now we're operational. So now we're we're past that. Now we can uh, go to this screen right here. On this screen here, again, the status is on the right hand side here. And uh, let's see, see what's over here on the left here. A little bit better. Maybe I'll move this over here. And. Uh, I'll try to give you some live data right here. So you will see here answer to the PLC. So this is uh, um, the V load is is the supply voltage right here, the one that's on. The halt is the halt over here, halt active. The ref is the homing valid over here. And then we've got the actual position, 6770, which as I said earlier, is there's a, um, a factor group, which is the minus two, and it's in millimeters here. And the actual velocity right now is zero because we're not moving. So, over here on the left, I have got the halt and stop. So I'm just going to turn off the halt for a second. So the halt, you see that the halt went off right here. Under the C pause, I'll turn it back on. It's back on now. The uh, okay. So as I said previously. In order to operate this, you need your DIN 4 and 5 here. So when I come into the FHP monitor, when I click on the enable, which is on the HMI, so right here I'm going to click on this. Uh, the drive is now on, and you see this status right here. The power stage is active. You have your voltage down here for your DC bus. And uh, we're servoing right now. So at, at this point, uh, the first thing I want to do is home it. My homing method is just home to current position. So as soon as I click on this start homing bit, this actual position, which is 6770, will go to zero. So I'm just going to click on it. Now it's zero. Turn it off. And then the start task is you can come into here. I don't know what will show up here. I'm going to change it to 20%. So I just changed this to 20% here. And uh, now I'm going to click on the start task. And And nothing's happening. Ah. So the thing I missed here, turn the start task off, is uh, direct mode. So that's this bit up top here. Uh, direct mode is just turning on one of the bits. The uh, In order to be in direct mode, um, I'm just going to expand this right here. So you have operating mode selection. And then you have control mode. Okay, so if I go to the next page, it blows this up here. So to be in direct mode, you need uh, 
bit 6 is equal to 1, bit 7 is equal to 2. And in the control mode, to be in position mode, bit 2 and bit 1 both are 0. So that little bit I have is just turning B6 equal to 1 on, and now we're in direct mode. So now if I click on the, uh, put the controller back here. I put this back here. There's the 20%, which matches there. There's my set point target, which matches that. I'll just change that for the sake of it. So there's my whole number coming through. So that'll be uh, shown as 293. And I'm going to declare it on the start task. Oh, sorry. I hit jog by accident. There's the start task. It's now moved. You probably didn't see it happen really quick. If you go here, my target was this, and my actual position is this right now. And we're done. And I can jog negative down here. I can jog plus. And that's all there is to it. And that's it for today. So I hope this helps. Uh, I'll put the sample code um, on Dropbox like I always do. And there'll be a link underneath this video. So please comment if you like this video. And uh, hopefully this helps you moving forward on your projects. Thanks.